this is Rob Tebber for Behind the Gloves in association with Fresco Box. I'm delighted to be joined by unbeaten super middleweight contender Callum Smith. How are you doing today, Callum? Yeah, good. Very good. Good, good. stuff. Thanks for having us down at the gym. No worries. You look very sharp in there. Ah, thank you. So, we are... What day is it today? Sorry, I'm quite tired. It's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, so, we're Thursday. nine days away yeah. from your World Boxing Super Series semi-final clash yeah. with Jürgen Bremer. How's preparation gone? Good. Very good, I think. I'm expected to say that everyone says that, but now I've had a good camp, we've had good sparring and it's gone the way we planned. So they've all done the job they were here to do and I feel like I've slowly got better each spar, each spar session and that's my job. Joe gives me stuff to do and I've got to work and improve and I feel I've done that throughout the camp and I'm in a good place. Now, Jürgen Bremer advanced to the semi-finals after beating Rob Brandt yeah. in his quarter-final. What did you make of this performance? Good, to be honest with you, I think there was a lot of question mark beforehand of Will Age caught up with his inactivity and stuff and he looked pretty good to be fair, although I, I believe Brandt was a middleweight and I think after a few rounds he, he realised he was a little bit out of his depth and I thought Braver had a lot of it his own way and I think it's easy to look good when you're doing it at your own, your own pace and your own doing, but apart from that I thought he looked good to be honest with you, I thought he looked fresh and still a little bit left in him and I've got to expect the best version of it. Were you surprised at how well he sort of responded to coming down in weight? I mean, he's like in his late 30s and he dropped from light heavy yeah, to super middle. Yeah, he's been at light heavy a bit. And again, that was another one of the question marks. How would he be at the weight? But he's done the 12 pretty good and he had you know, a lot of energy late on, which you know, if the weight was killing him, he would retire not pretty quick. But you know, he ticked a lot of boxes. He done well. He had a good win and you know, he's coming into this full of confidence. And, it's a big opportunity for him as well at the end of his career. He beats me, he fights yeah. winner Globe you bank in a massive fight and a massive money fight for himself. So I say he's fully motivated and so am I. The fight's taking place in Germany. Um, there were some rumours of consternation about whether or not the fight was going to take well actually whether or not the fight was going to take place at all at one yeah. stage. Um, just clear a little bit of that up for us. Was there any hesitancy on your part about no, going to not Germany? A, not at all, I think. When the tournament was offered to me, I knew it was a worldwide tournament and there was a massive chance I'd have to travel. And the minute I heard Grosje Bank was in Manchester, I sort of knew that I weren't going to be in Liverpool later, so I knew it was going to be Germany. But I was getting tweets saying there was rumours I was pulling out to battle to Germany, and that was never the case. I was always fighting, regardless of where the fight was going to be. I was willing to go to Flint, Michigan to fight Andy Drell for the WBC title, travelling. Something that you just got to do it, you have to do it, you've got to do it. And you know, I was a, a GB international in the amateur box all over the world, and it is what it is. You get in, you do your job, and you come home. And I'm, I'm no, not hesitant at all to go to Germany. I feel I can go there and I can do a good job with Jürgen Bremen and beat him regardless of where it is. Let's just talk a little bit about Rose against Eubank, um, yeah. something you just mentioned there, a huge fight this weekend. Um, firstly, let me just gauge your, your feelings about the fight. I know there's been a lot of hype surrounding it. Yeah, I, I think it's a good fight. I think there's a lot of hype because it's, you know, it's a hard one to pick. It's a, it's a genuine no 50 50. Um, I've said for a while, I believe Groves is too good and just too big for him. I think size will be a big factor, but one of, one of Groves' weak points is his stamina. He's shown to tie late in fights, and I think Eubank's best asset is his work rate, his engine, and his fitness. And, you know, if Groves is just tired, then you've got a fancy Eubank late, but I just believe. Groves the better fighter at distance, I think he'll win a lot of the early rounds, he might have a few rough patches towards the end, but I do believe he'll hold on and I think Groves points, but it's not a confident pick, it is a tough one to pick, but yeah, Groves points. Much has been made about the weight of the two fighters, Chris yeah. Eubank Jr. coming up from middleweight, do you see that being a pivotal factor in the fight? Could be, yeah, because I think Eubank believes he can make middleweight, and in my opinion, if you can make middleweight, you're a middleweight, you're not a super middleweight, I would make middleweight. So I just I do believe they both both weighing around 12 stone and the next day Eubank are probably just over 12 stone and I think Groves is probably 13, 13 and a half stone. I think you know, there will be at least a stone difference between them on the night and that's a lot of weight and you know, Eubank's been him at middleweight, he's been him with a few super middleweights but not on the hit like George Groves and I just think it'll be interesting to see. People just assume he's got the stag's chin, he may have, he may not but I think that question will be asked Saturday night along with a lot of other questions that I was still on answer, but it's 
it's a good one. His grow is Eubank as good as he believes he is and everyone else believes he is, we'll find out. His grows a little bit too good for him, we'll find that out, but it is a good one. Do you think the fact that there's been such intense media speculation on Groves Eubank is is good for you? In the sense of uh, there's less pressure on you, it seems, going into the fight with the younger brain, or certainly less scrutiny. Yeah, it, I, it, I've had a lot of less publicity and rightly so, that is a big fight, it's a big domestic one, I didn't expect it to be any different and you know I'm not one for the limelight and one who enjoys all the media so it's been, it's been good, it's been, I've been left to just crack on with my training, come to the gym as normal, train, get my work done, go home and you know, I haven't have to worry about any you know, publicity, any slagging matches with the opponents. I just do my own thing and that's the way I like it. Yeah, the final will be a little bit different and there'll be obviously a lot more media attention then, but it's been good to be under the radar for the semi-final and you know, I'll just get in, do my job and then hopefully push on to the final. I just want to talk about your quarter-final match with Eric Scogland. Um, yeah. Great fight. Yeah. Um, Eric Scogland, of course, later on suffered, um, or suffered some injuries yeah. uh, from training and what have you. Just want to gauge your opinion on some of the comments made recently by Chris Eubank Sr. Um, yeah. With regards to fighters being injured in the ring and yeah. what have you. Obviously, as somebody who has somewhat experience with Eric Scogland, just gauge your opinion on those comments. Uh, I think it's just wrong and bad taste, to be honest with you, especially in with the Michael Watson stuff and there's some with the Blackwell stuff, and then obviously George Groves has got the good neck stuff. It, it's not. It's not nice to bring it up, to be honest with you. It's obviously Groves must still struggle with the gut neck stuff, and it's just, I think it's just bad comments, to be honest with you, and bad press. I just don't know. I understand he says stuff to get himself out there and get his son's name out there, but there's a line, and I just don't see what, what he gained from bringing that type of stuff up, to be honest with you. Something we spoke about um, just off camera with Joe Gallagher, um, Eric Scotland now is, is up and yeah, thankfully he's yeah. walking and talking, um, which I'm sure makes yeah. you, you know, feel yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's just, no, take boxing away from me. No, life's more important and hopefully he can make a you know, full recovery and he can you know, live his life as normal and boxing to sport. You know, I, I, was, I got on with him before the fight, I was speaking to him after the fight, it is, it is to me, it's just the sport. It's something we both do to earn a living. It's not not personal, and you no, know, it wasn't nice when I seen the tweets and seen what has happened to him. And you know, I was happy to be here when you know, he come out of the coma and stuff, and he's out back home in hospital. And you know, any any good news you know, makes me happy now. Just I just want to see him back, living a good and healthy life, which is what I believe we all want. It, it just summed up my last couple of years. To be honest with you, it's been frustrating. I beat Mohammadi, won the Olympian title, become. WBC Manstri and my career was on a high and then it just jacked the gale for Jack moved up and weight, vacated, pierced bids with the L, swapping and changing, it just felt like I was keeping busy but I was having fights that was lower than the level I'd been fighting at and I wasn't as motivated as I wasn't performing but I was still winning and I was just ticking over and then it just got to a point where it, I felt like the fight was just getting moved and moved and moved and moved and I'd still be sitting waiting for it now and the World Boxing Series come along and I just liked the idea of it, it's, if anything it sounded too good to be true, it was an unbelievable format which people have seen now and it just guaranteed me three fights providing I kept winning at a good level, you know, financially it was good and I won a world title at the end of it, I won the tournament so it was just it got me back fighting, back active, which is something I haven't had over the last... I sat out for 10 months and then ticked over for something like eight months before that. So it was just to get my career back on track the best way possible and you know, it was the best decision I've ever made. So it's frustrating as that time out of the ring or that time without the fights must have been. It's kind of, it's worked out okay for you now in the end. Yeah, I, yeah, I joked with Joe, so like it all worked out in the end. I didn't envision it at the time. I, all I wanted to do was fight for the world title and. I felt I did in that and I look at Benavides with the WBC title now and I think that sh should be mine, I should have boxed for that and I should have won it but no, it is what it is, everything happens for a reason and you know, if I would have won and boxed the L, I would probably wouldn't have been in the tournament and like I say the tournament's the best thing, best decision I made in boxing and you know, I'm, I'm in it to win it, I'm not in it just to make the numbers up. The Scotland fight was somewhat more competitive than some people potentially thought it would yeah. be, were you expecting a tough fight? Um, yeah, I was expecting a tough fight because I knew, I knew it was good and I knew when we studied him after the, the draft in Monaco, 
he looked, he was hard to beat. He had, a, he was big for the weight. He was good at what he does. He was effective and he was unbeaten in 26 at the weight above. So he, he was no mug. And people just sitting with the Bremer one, they just assumed it was a walk in the park for me. And I didn't expect it to be to go the way it did, but I did expect a, a, a good fight. I knew he was a good fighter, and at the time, he, I, I believe it's the best win in my career so far. So. You know, taking everything into account, I thought it, it wasn't a good performance, but it was a good win, regardless of how I got it. So, you know, I got a bit of criticism, and yeah, I, I did slightly underperform, but people underperform and lose, I underperformed and won still, and you know, I can take a lot of positives from that and hopefully improve on it in the future. Do you think part of that was to do with the sort of stop start that you'd had in your career, the fact that you hadn't been, and in your own words, sort of fighting at the level that you feel that you maybe should have been fighting? Do you think that had something to do with the performance? Yes, yeah, possibly, possibly the, the ten months out and add to the you know the lower level opposition before and you know, I beat I think Rabras, Field and Mohammedi and I felt like I was Superman, I had to box to anyone then and and then I just sort of just said the water and then sat out the ring and I wasn't injured. If you have ten months out the ring and you're injured, then it's probably a little bit easier to take. But I went. I was in the gym waiting and waiting, and it probably all did have a slight effect on it. At the fact that you know, I believe Scoglin was a good fighter, and it, it all sort of come into one on the night. But you no, know, I got the win, and like I said, I think 12 rounds have done me a lot better than going in and knocking someone out in two rounds. And yet your confidence levels are a little bit better. But in terms of ring rust and learning, and, and I probably wouldn't have so. You know, in the long run, it probably all worked out for the best. That's something that you touched on earlier. You're now back in the ring before you yeah. know it, and you've got sort of a couple of months out. I mean, that's that's got to feel good. That's important to sort of to keep going. Yeah, definitely. And you know, by the time before I've stepped in the ring against Bremer, I know if I win, who I'm fighting, where I'm fighting, where I'm fighting, and it, it's just that a bit of stability rather than get one fight out the way and then who I'm going to fight next or start negotiations with him, and it, it's just. This tournament took away all that part of it and all the, the messy side of it, what people don't see. And it is basically you enter the tournament, you fight whoever's in the, in the same side of the draw as you, and you fight where you're told to fight. And it's it's simple, it's like being in the amateurs again. You go to a tournament, there's a draw and you fight, and there's no negotiate side, which I've been in amongst draw for you know, the last year. It, it's not a nice part of boxing, which a lot of people don't see. and this tournament to haul that away from it and not to be in a breath of fresh air. Just get to focus on your boxing. Yeah, I take pro to box, to train, to box, to win. And that's that. I did never envision myself being in all well, the politics side of it, the negotiation side of different promoters and stuff like that. And it, it was frustrating. And especially when there's nothing you can do, you're just sitting, waiting around and fights aren't happening for no fault of your own. And it, it is, it was frustrating, but hopefully that's the last I'll see of that. And you know, I'm back fighting, I'm back active. and back winning and you know, hopefully this year will be the year I'll, be, I'll become a world champion. You're part of like one of the most blossoming stables and one of the most thriving stables in yeah. the UK or indeed world boxing. Um, was that helpful or did it kind of make you a little bit envious? So you're, you're 10 months out and you see your brothers fighting for, for world titles, you see obviously Anthony Crawley, your stable mate. You know, yeah. Is that it, difficult for you or does it help having it, them around? It helps I think so I'm always in and I was always at boxing shows where I think if I was on my own training it would have probably been a little bit depressing but I was in the gym and you know, I feel like I'm fighting and my brothers are fighting anyway so I, it was if anything, it just kept me enjoying boxing again, still going to watch them whereas if I, if I didn't have them to watch and support then probably was a fell out of love with boxing altogether but no it's I enjoy being in this gym. It's a good gym, it's a good atmosphere. And we're all friends as well as our gym mates and it just makes boxing that a little bit enjoyable. A camp can be long and it can be grueling at times and if you come to the gym you have a bit of a laugh and joke and people just on the same path as you're doing the same things, going through the same thing, it does help a lot and you know, I think that's been a lot to do with the success the gym's had. Uh, Paul giving you any advice for fighting in Germany? Knock him out. <laughs> nice. No, like I think, obviously I've been there with him twice. Machen boxed him. They've been there a few times, and I boxed myself in the amateurs. And it's one of them. I boxed all over the world in the amateurs, and you just you get in the ring and you box, and regardless of who it is, you do your job. The only person I've got to listen to is Joe, and that's that. And the crowd, it's irrelevant. And I could be in Liverpool, Germany, I could be in America, anywhere. I'm there to do a job, and that's to win, regardless of how I win. Okay, and just finally, Callum, as you mentioned, World Boxing Super Series has been something of a saviour for you. It's, it's, it's yeah, really, definitely. It's really pushed you forward. Um, with that being said, mm -hmm. 
what weight class would you like to see in the next season? Uh, would I like to see? Would you like to see? So there's an unlimited pool of money and you just yeah, get to pick get anyone. Um, and forgetting all political ties, yeah. we don't like that. I think the welterweight would be good, the welterweight's a good division. And lightweight or the feathers, they're quite good weight. Lightweight's a good weight to be fair. If you, know, you had Lomachenko move up than that is Garcia. And he's probably, he's got a, got a <laughs> got in there, there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of good weights and you've seen a lot of good fighters calling out for their weight to be the next one and stuff. It'll be interesting to see. I think it's any time now they're going to announce the next two for next season and it'll be interesting to see who's up for the new jumps in because it is a good format. You didn't like heavyweight version, you can move Golden up Russians. when it's two seasons yeah, in a row. I know, time to <laughs> double up, but nah, it'd be good. The light heavies would be good. There's a lot of good Russians knocking yeah. about and all that, yeah, so. I think I might stay super middle of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. Callum Smith, thanks very much for speaking to Pleasure Behind the Gloves no and having us down to the gym today. Uh, pleasure Look mate. forward to seeing you in action next thank week you. against Jürgen Bremer in Germany. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks very much, mate. mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers, Callum. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, fans. It's Michelle Joy Phelps. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do so by clicking this icon right here or else.